let me introduce everybody as we talk about building online communities in your online discussion. Um, I'm Michael. I'm going to get myself out of the way as quickly as possible here because I want you to learn from our guests. But I am the Harmonized Success Coach. And I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Amanda, Betty Jo, and Melinda in Natchez, Mississippi this uh, summer. It's Natchez, rhymes with matches. Uh, beautiful little town on the Mississippi River. I, I was there for their community college, Mississippi Community College retreat. Um, and so I asked the three of them to share what they were using with Harmonize there at that retreat. And it was so powerful where we asked them to come in and do a webinar so everybody could get to meet them as well. So I'm going to pass the microphone to Amanda Hood, the director of e-learning to introduce herself and the group. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for having me today. I'm so excited to be here um, with two ladies that are just really go-getters at Colan. So I'm the director of e-learning at Kapai Lincoln Community College here in Southwest Mississippi. And uh, we have three campuses and Melinda and Betty Jo are on the other two campuses, um, but I'll let them introduce each one of themselves. Hey, I'm uh, Betty Jo Harris. I'm a history instructor on the Natchez campus of Copile Lincoln. And I'm Melinda Laird. I'm the business and marketing uh, management technology coordinator, which is a career tech program for a two year program for students that are interested in usually starting their own business. Um, and I also happen to be the public speaking in, instructor on this campus as well. So. And uh, Melinda also happens to be a pretty impressive yoga instructor. That was a great uh, routine that you walked us through out there on the grass, uh, yes. up there on the bluffs and Natchez. That was really cool. I had a great flight home because of that uh, yoga. Thank you so much for yeah. doing that. Let Anytime. me tell you a little. <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about us. Uh, Forty Two Lines, the company that created Harmonize, and then we'll jump into our discussion. We've been building custom software for over a decade. The company was founded. Uh, because we saw a need for intuitive, easy to use instructional technology, um, easy to use, intuitive. In fact, the name of our company, 42 Lines, comes from that spirit of ease of use. Um, you can Google it if you want. It has nothing to do with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but it does have something to do with the first printing press. So out of 42 Lines and what we've been building came Harmonize, an LTI or app for learning management systems. And Harmonize provides a modern discussion board that's designed to improve student engagement and retention. Now, for those of you who are new um, to Harmonize in this webinar, and maybe you've never seen it before, let me just give you a quick overview of it. Here's your first look. You can see in this uh, uh, image, it's a uh, very different from your typical LMS discussion. You'll see things in here that are familiar to social media interface things like being able to communicate with images very quickly, uh, be able to uh, mention or even use like like buttons and things like that to communicate and engage. Here we have an expanded topic created by the instructor. This one happens to be about digital photography and no FERPA violation here. That's my daughter walking along a path in front of the entrance of Little Cottonwood Canyon. I am contractually obligated to put her in all of my trainings and presentations. But you can see the, uh, the um, Instructor has created an example, and then the students are entering their work, they're submitting their posts, and they take on the form of these cards. We can click on a card to turn it over and dive into the discussion a little bit more deeper. You can also see that this is a mobile first design platform. We created it to work on phones and iPads to meet our students where they are and when they're learning, which can sometimes be with non-traditional students, like during a break at work, waiting for the bus, or using their mobile device because their own children are on their computers. So this is set up to work in whatever mobile app you're using with your LMS, and Harmonize will behave exactly the same. And it will even allow students to continue and pick up what they were working on. So if they took a picture with their phone, started making a post, lost connection, they go to their computer, it'll all be saved there in the cloud, ready for them to continue working. Uh, at Copaya Lincoln and with all of the Mississippi Community Colleges, we work with their Canvas LMS, but you should be aware that we work in all LMSs. So Harmonize can be um, connected to Moodle, Brightspace, Blackboard. It works seamlessly within that LMS. No other usernames or passwords, no other windows to open, no other apps to load. It just works directly inside of your LMS. 
Now, as we're going through the webinar today and we have this conversation with our guests, you might have some questions come up and we wanna answer those questions. So here in Zoom, you've got that little Q&A um, icon, the two speech bubbles, chat is one, but Q&A is two speech bubbles. Click on that whenever you have a question and Heather, our co-host today will stop us, share those questions, or we will also have time at the end to answer your questions. And I'll remind you about that before we wrap up. So with that, let's get back to our guests. Um, can you each tell us a little bit about your educational background and your experience? Let's start with Amanda, who I understand, along with being an educator, used to be an investigator. You wanna tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> no, I can't. Of course, I can't tell you that. No, okay. um, <laughs> my path to education was a little crooked. Um, so when I graduated with my bachelor's degree, I ended up spending about five years in the workforce. One of the jobs being a special investigator for the federal government, which was very interesting, but it was not a long-term career for me. I wanted to be closer to home, uh, closer to my family. So ended up moving back home um, and finishing my education degree. And so that was in math and language, the two things that don't normally go together, but hey, it works for me. And so uh, for a little while, I was in the K-12 sector. I taught uh, math and taught Spanish and uh, coached tennis, which is another love in my life. And I eventually got to the point in my background where I had the education, the credentials to be able to teach at the community college level. So I did that for about seven years, taught math at uh, the community college level for Kapai Lincoln and got the opportunity after I finished my PhD to become the director of e-learning. And it's been a wild ride for the past four years. Um, it's our, our community college system in Mississippi is so amazing. In fact, the model of our community college system in Mississippi is often uh, written about and researched. And so um, we, share, we share our uh, virtual community college classes across the state of Mississippi. And so learning how to manage that and how to administrate that and how to make it work for our students has been really great. We're a rural community college, and that means that we don't always have the resources in-house. And so being able to share across the state is really amazing. And anything that we can have that makes that experience better, more engaging for our students, we wanna do that. And I'm happy to share today how Harmonize has been a part of that. Excellent. And I, I really appreciate what you just said there about collaboration. I've noticed that with all learning communities, like collaboration is totally key to success. Um, and I hope Harmonize is, is helping with that. I know that we have a lot of campuses within the system using Harmonize now, and I hope they're sharing resources. So I will have the uh, um, uh, former tennis instructor volley over to Betty Jo Harris, who is teaching history. And tell us a little bit about your educational history, if you could. Um, I have a degree in uh, an undergraduate degree in history, a master's degree in history, and then a master's degree in teaching. And I was out of the classroom for a while. I'm a mother of four sons and got back in the classroom. And unlike uh, Amanda Hood and her investigative background, I cannot use a paper clip to defend myself. <laughs> I have to, uh, I read books. Yes, that's what I do. And I, I noticed with um, the, this online learning that became um, on steroids, so to speak, during COVID, that the regular old discussion boards, or I hate to use the word pitiful, but they just did not engage students. And I just felt like the, the grades I, I was giving for these boards was not, um, I, I didn't have any objectives. And so when uh, Dr. Hood introduced me to this platform, I, I just jumped on it because it was so much more engaging. And as someone who's been in the classroom uh, and an older student, um, I, I graduated, I bet, before all of you from college, uh, this was something real modern looking for me and it was easy for me to use. So I, I, I felt like it was a win-win all the way around. Fantastic. Um, we're going to jump into some of Betty Jo's courses here and look at some screenshots even. Um, but before we do that, Melinda, Program Coordinator for Business and Marketing, Management Technology and Public Speaking, Yoga Guru, tell us a little bit about your history. 
Well, being in the career technical side, I spent maybe the first 12 or 13 years of my career in business and marketing. I was in sales. I did public relations. My first degree is in communication, and I got a, a graduate degree in communication. Um, and so I kind of was climbing the corporate ladder and had an opportunity to move back to my hometown of Natchez to be the director of public relations and marketing for our local hospital. And in that role, I was uh, in the process of starting a very young family. And uh, those kind of jobs are really demanding. And I, I had a, a, a relationship with the, the dean here on campus. And she said, I really need somebody to teach this program that's been in the workforce. And I, you know, I know that, uh, you know, teaching isn't going to make you rich and famous, but have you ever thought about it before? And so here I am starting my 17th year doing this and uh, have loved every minute of it. Um, it just so happens that I had a couple of great uh, teachers in my family that helped me along. And as time went on, this campus needed a public speaking teacher and uh, I jumped into that role as well. So um, I've really enjoyed, like Betty Jo, uh, all of us, all of my classes are being taught with the Canvas counterpart, but face to face, all of them. And then all of a sudden, that March, we all went home for spring break and never came back. And so uh, it really was grasping at all the tools that we could use to make the online component of what we do so much more robust than it ever had been. Mm -hmm. And so as I transitioned back to campus, um, I was trying all sorts of new things, any kind of training I could get. And Harmonize was just one thing that I looked at and I thought, this is easy. This is really easy. And it really will engage the students in a way that, that you know, I needed. We were desperately looking for um, when I couldn't see them face to face all the time. Now that we've kind of transitioned and changed so many things, you know, I don't see my classroom ever going back to the way it was. We're just moving forward, you know. Interesting. It sounds like you've, you've both found tools that work in an online environment that you don't have to abandon when you're face to face because we can bring them into that blended learning environment. I think I heard you use the word high flex later. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Uh, but there is a place for every one of these online tools to not replace the teacher, right? But maybe in some ways replace some of the textbooks or those heavy backpacks that students are carrying around and give them an opportunity to revisit what happens in the classroom even when they're home or can't get into the, the classroom environment. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Amanda, I wanna pivot um, and ask you to tell us how you learned about Harmonize because you were the decision maker here. Um, how did this journey begin? Sure, so, um, like I said earlier, I've been in this position for four years, and so you can imagine with the number of different vendors who have something to bring to the table in terms of internet technology, instructional technology, they're, they run rampant. I mean, they, there's really so many different products out there, and so um, to have something catch my eye the way that Harmonize did to seem very easy to implement to seem very easy to train my students. Uh, I'm sorry, not my students, my instructors, but you know, in a sense, the, the students as well. It it really it really had to be. It really had to be all of those things. It really had to be easy to implement, easy to teach, and it had to work. Um, and so when I when I did a demo of Harmonize, I was contacted by Harmonize to do a demo, and I saw it. Um, I was just really amazed at how very much like social media it looked. Uh, you know, I walk around at different times, I've walked around in classrooms or I've walked around through the quad on our campus and you see over students' shoulder them holding their phone and they're almost always on social media. Um, and if they're on a harmonized post doing their homework, it looks the same. And so um, with the price of harmonize, I thought the return on investment that we were getting was amazing. Um, we did a pilot over the summer with Harmonize and um, saw that our instructors were you know, ready to jump on board because, again, the ease of use. We, <laughs> I've always, I always say this about anything is that 
you always hear the negative when something doesn't work like it's supposed to, but you very rarely hear the positive when it does work the way it's supposed to. And what was amazing to me is that I was hearing from students. <laughs> so I heard good things from the instructors who were using it, which is nice. You know, I expect to, to hear that. And I was reaching out for that type of feedback. But then I was hearing from students saying, oh, we really like this. And it was just so seamless to work with our LMS. Like you said, they're just Canvas. Um, and I just felt like with the lack of in-person communication that we lost during the COVID period, Harmonize replaced a piece of that for us. It, it gave our students a feel like they were really communicating with people and not just um, some anonymous user on the other side of some screen. They were, what I was seeing was that they were really sharing things that were going on in their lives. And um, as well, I'm sure we'll see in a minute, Melinda and Betty Jo just really hit it out of the park with their ability to bring students in, even though it was virtual. Um, I'm so excited for y'all to see some of the examples, but I can speak um, with all confidence that as the LMS and administrator, as what I would consider, of course, everybody considers themselves to be understaffed and overworked, but as an understaffed and overworked administrator of an LMS during a time when um, virtual is reality, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, to me, it met so many needs for us. Um, the last thing I'll say before I pass it off is just that um, my dissertation when I did my PhD was on connection between students and their campus, between students and their instructors, and how much that plays into uh, attrition and retention rates. Mm -hmm. And so having a product that can keep us having that type of engagement, that type of connection in, in this age is so important. And I think it gives us an outlet for students to, to be able to share with each other more vulnerably more honestly, more genuinely. And um, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, so I apologize. But again, I just want to testify to the fact that it's easy. <laughs> it didn't put anything else on my plate. The customer service has been amazing and I've gotten great feedback from my users. So um, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that I'll be able to rattle some more stuff off to everybody's ears in a few minutes. So. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll come back to that for sure. I really like the way you summed that up. You know, we have to, when virtual, when, how did you say that? when virtual is reality, right. yeah, we're in a place where students are kind of wondering like, am I being graded by a computer? Is there a real person back there or a robot? And mm -hmm. we've given them a tool to connect with each other, but also connect with instructors. And I want to be really clear on something. There is no tech tool out there that is the magic solution. There are tech tools that can make things easier. Um, and with this tech tool, we have made a lot of improvements to it based on feedback from amazing instructors like, of the three of you. And so I do want to shift to um, what you're doing, Betty Jo, in your history class, if we could talk about this for just a little bit, because you shared with us um, the role of discussions. And I'm just going to set you up for this because it was one of the most powerful things that I saw and, and ask you to talk about it. But when you were discussing with students World War II propaganda and having those kind of conversations about something that is uh, very offensive, how do you do that in an online environment where you can't be face-to-face -face with you know, emotional connections through facial expressions and voice intonation. Can you talk a little bit about how you used Harmonize in that activity? Um, it was really a great activity. I used this summer teaching uh, US history online. And this summer, we also saw an increase of some hate crimes against Asian Americans. So I feel like the, the way history can be related to students who many times in their minds have, we don't like it, it's boring, it's dates, is you connect something in history when you see some patterns in some current behavior or current situations. So that was the perfect opportunity to bring up the fact that in World War II, um, we had some, some issues with uh, some Japanese citizens, some Asian citizens in our country. And I could show that um, it was so common that, you know, cartoons were made by some of, by Warner Brothers, basically um, 
showing a, a very a negative side of Asian looking people. And I could combine that with some of the, the later stuff. And I use Dr. Seuss as an example, because Dr. Seuss recently, the estate of um, Dr. Seuss took some books out of publication that they felt uh, was demeaning to Asian people. And so I could use an example of Dr. Seuss, World War II, the group mentality of maybe not liking a certain specific group of Americans and tie it all in together with one prompt. And um, my, my discussion went out the roof because students related to it. They had seen Warner Brothers cartoons so they could relate to those characters. And I think something that needs to be mentioned here it is a safe place to discuss feelings like that if you do it in the right manner and the, the question's not, uh, you know, you need to have some, some, some skill in, in wording your questions where you're not opening the door to negativity, but I think the safe, the safe platform made all the difference in that discussion. Yeah, and I've heard of instructors like supplementing their LMS with things like Facebook groups. And at no point would you want students to use their Facebook accounts to discuss things like that in an academic setting. And then that yeah. would be completely unsafe. But within Harmonize, yes, you're in your course and you're in there. Let's take a look at some screenshots. And if you could walk us through what's happening in a couple of your other discussions. This one on Mayan, on the Mayan creation myth. Yes, um, this, this is a... Um, a discussion board from World Civ One, um, and we were moving the, comp the the chapter was going into Mesoamerica, and so I wanted to show students that the mythology of humans is one of the signs that your civilization is getting more civilized if you have time to to create this mythology. And so I used the story of Popo Vu with um, the Mayan and then Aztec civilizations. And um, it just shows their thoughts on creation. And the Mayans believed that man was created from corn, from maize. And so the water that they water their crops with would become the blood of man. So I used um, a video which would engage them and the picture alone I thought was very engaging. I used a link that explained it where they could read it and then I, I used a prompt where at the end, I had them compare a little bit of some other um, creation story, so to speak. And most of these students in Mississippi have some type of Christian background. So most of them jumped on Christianity. But what I found interesting was some of the initial posts, if you go to the next slide, you will see some of the initial posts were no longer 25 words. This student had a post of 322 words in her post. And I, I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, this is like amazing. She also had five comments from her classmates, but then I started going down the line and reading comments and I found another student who had a post of 238 words. She had 15 comments to her post. And then another student jumped in, shared a Chinese mythology creation about um, man coming from the egg. And it started going where students were talking about, oh, the Chinese believed in the egg started man here's this uh link to a video you could watch then someone said well what what does it have to do with easter egg hunts and christianity hmm. and I, I mean it took me you know a while to grade these because i wanted to give each student you know some kind of feedback um uh, this mm -hmm. is the student who responded with uh the chinese origin story i had students then going back into the earlier lesson, which is amazing that that happened. And they wanted to talk about the Egyptian story of creation and, and mummification. 
I, I, it just, it kind of exploded and it, it just really showed me that these students responded because they can put links, they can put pictures, they can feel free to add what they want. And to, to kind of finish my last statement on, on this, I want to mention, I have a student who has an individual learning plan in the community college. And she reads things very literally. So sometimes, you know, her comments and discussions can be like on that line of almost a little inappropriate, but they're okay and she's engaged. But what she's jumped on this semester is going through images online and adding an image that she thinks will help her classmates understand this myth better. So yeah. each week now, we're all looking forward to this one young lady's image that she's gonna put on the discussion. It's, uh, and she's found a little niche. She's, she's safe. Her classmates don't have any idea she might have some special learning needs. They mm -hmm. see her as equal because we're all on the same platform. It's, it's been really fun to watch this happen. That's fantastic. I, I had a similar experience many, many years ago teaching fifth grade using blogs when they first came out mm -hmm. and encouraging my students to blog. And we created some blogs and one of my students who had selective mutism would speak at home all of the time, but would never speak in school became the person who wrote and said the most in blogs and was participating in a completely new environment. And that's where I started to realize, like, if we did this right, would you agree that every student should have an IEP? Because every student is individual and learns in a specific way and could have a plan that works best for them. Um, and these tools can help bridge that gap when a student yes. doesn't feel comfortable communicating in person. I do want to come back to one more thing that you said, Betty Jo, before we see what Melinda has created. You mentioned this is going to be a lot of work for me because you had students posting so much. And here in your screenshot, which you shared with us, which I didn't even intend to do, but I wanna point out, you can come into the discussion in SpeedGrader in that one window. Yes. And not only give that student that grade and provide them with that timely feedback so they can adjust their learning right on the fly, but you can also participate in the discussion here. So coming back to what you were saying earlier about those students feeling isolated in an online environment, well, now they know they're not being graded by, um, a computer because Professor Harris just commented or even just reacted. A simple reaction just lets them know that you're present and you're participating and you're in there. So thank you for sharing that screenshot so we could point that out. Um, let's talk about a little bit of a different subject here. Um, public relations, business management, and marketing. And before we do that, I just want to remind everybody, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. We will come to them at the end. And I know that you have a lot more to share Betty Jo, so please put your questions in there. But Melinda, tell us about your experience with Harmonize and um, how you're using it in your courses and what benefits you saw. Okay, so um, I kind of explained that I'm a career and technical program, which means that students come in to major in business and marketing management, and they go out and uh, maybe start their own business. They might get a job in one of the related fields, but during their time here, I'm really kind of their primary instructor. They would take typical semester would be three classes with me, business and marketing, and it could be things like advertising or digital media or um, merchandising math, like a retail math, marketing, of course, you know, those, all those types of things. And in a typical semester, they would take three of those with me and then two of their academic courses and a variety of things there. So what happens in my program is, and it's very important to the learning and the success of the students that we sometimes don't focus on, it, we build a community. We build a community, I get to know my students in a way that, um, you know, I understand kind of what's going on in their lives and the ups and downs of things. And so to be able to do that in a manner where um, that community is still thriving, you know, and they care about each other and not see each other every single day. So in a, nor you know, years ago in a classroom setting I and having three, three classes with a student in a semester, it would be like, okay, take a 15 minute break and come back from your, for your next class. So I was seeing these students like once or twice every day. Um, and so that's just not the way that it's going to work now, you know, moving forward into the future. 
um, I kind of transitioned into this high flex mode. And so for me, it's like a hybrid class. However, um, a lot of times these students would maybe come to the classroom because we do have students that absolutely need to be in the classroom. Uh, they learn better that way. They, that's the best way for them to kind of get the information. We have students that absolutely cannot be in the classroom for whatever reason. And in times of COVID, we have a whole new set of reasons, you know? Um, so they can dial in um, to a Zoom call like we're doing today. And then sometimes we have students that can't do either. And so what happened over the course of last year is I taught all three of those types of students all at the same time. And what I found was, so for those students say that they could not be there that day, they could, they missed the discussion. It's recorded and they worked on an assignment based off that recording. So they specifically had to answer questions in that recording and students that participated already had the credit for that for just being there and part of the discussion. And part of the way that we did that was using um, Harmonize. So what I found is when you looked at like the old type of discussion board, it, it just wasn't very, I mean, as a marketer, it wasn't very appealing or exciting, you know? And so when I put a discussion out there about a particular ad campaign or social media campaign or something like that. And I want to kind of get everybody's discussions or thoughts about it. There's a, a visual, there's a video and there is my picture and their picture. And it looks like social media, it feels like social media. And, and nine times out of 10, they're using their phone to do this. And so they're able to get a grasp on what the material is and talk to each other uh, you mentioned the reactions briefly. I love the reactions. You know, that's what they do when they go on social media anyway. They like it, you know, and they get three options to react to on Harmonize. Um, and so really it started out as a way for me to sort of grade that daily grade when we weren't seeing each other all the time. And now it's just become part of a, you know, a bigger discussion. You know, it's not, it's not a participation grade like discussion boards used to have to be. Um, mm -hmm. It's more part of the lesson, you know, because it can be so uh, user friendly, multimedia, and um, can engage everyone. I so, want to come back to something you said. You said the the was it old fashioned discussion boards? I guess you're talking about Canvas discussions, right? So you you said it, I didn't, but yeah. I do want to ask you, like, just in the because you've used Canvas discussions before you were introduced to Harmonize, right? Absolutely. This wasn't like uh, your first your first chance using discussions. So, right. have you noticed any difference in how, as a communications you know director and instructor, have you noticed a difference in how they communicate? Are they using those reactions? Are they using any gifs or memes or images? What what are you seeing? <laughs> yes, and I encourage all those images, all their little emojis, all that stuff that they put in there. Um, but it's a lot more participatory, you know, they mm. really, they engage and interact it, it, because it's, it's so much more user-friendly for them. It's, it's what they're used to. And I say they, me too. I mean, I use right. my Facebook every day and Instagram or whatever. So it's what we are familiar with and it looks and feels like that to them. And so we're able to kind of gauge in a way that, that we're used to, that we know is how, it, but instead of you know, our own personal whatever, we're talking about this topic or we're bringing in pictures that, oh, that reminds me of this ad I saw last night. Ms. Laird, you got to see this. And it's like a YouTube mm -hmm. link or something, you know? So, um, totally. yeah, it, it makes it a lot more engaging and, and fun. <laughs> yeah, Mike, I'd like to add to this too. That, Go for it. Um, a couple of phrases that I've noticed in, that students will use when they refer to the old fashioned discussion boards is they'll call it fluff or they'll call it busy work. And I haven't heard that with our harmonized discussions. Mm -hmm. So I think when we all have lower bandwidth <laughs> and we feel like we're all, always on technology already and here is this really robotic prompt of a discussion board versus uh, these discussion boards with, with images and these different mm -hmm. ways to react, I feel like students don't even though it may be the same subject matter, maybe the same topic, I feel like it doesn't feel like fluff anymore. It doesn't feel like 
if I just had, if you know, the, the math person in me, like if I just read all the entries before and after we began using a harmonize, it just it feels so much more organic. And I, I probably couldn't put my finger on it and say, you know, what's different about the way that these students are using language, but it sounds like our students. <laughs> it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like something they've copied off of Wikipedia <laughs> or something mm -hmm. or, or something that they found, you know, in a textbook. It just feels so much more natural. And I, and I like that feeling. I think our students feel it too, even if they can't put their fingers on it. Right. I think it's a sense of community, you know, within the classroom. I mean, Betty Jo hit it on it when she was talking about her classroom as well. I, you know, that's part of my program. I still have to have that sense of community and it makes the students more successful. So it's really, I mean, it's very important because when it keeps them engaged and it makes them more thoughtful, like Betty Jo said, you went from a post that had to be words to like 320 words, just just for fun, you know, just because I want to share with y'all what I've got to say, um, the same thing happens, and the same thing happens with, like, comments underneath. They just kind of go back and forth. It sort of takes on a life of its own. It's um, amazing. Yep. Go I, ahead, Betty Jo. I'd like to add something, too. I was telling Amanda earlier this week that I also am a sponsor for um, Phi Theta Kappa, which is the Honor Society here on campus. And I have used, I, I create the class for the leadership members of, of PTK. And this year we are doing um, a campus read and I've used Harmonize to organize the modules for the discussions. And um, we are doing a book called Stamped and it is um, kind of scary in, in rural Mississippi. And it's a scary subject to talk about being racist or anti-racist or an assimilist um, person. And um, I have started the class. We haven't started our meetings yet for the, the book read, but the class has 10 members. And so far, um, this is my third year to work with this group. The discussions, are definitely in a safe place uh, for black and white students to both share equally and have no fear. And uh, they, have, they have already increased exponentially. Um, and so what we're doing is trying to get these leaders in the Honor Society to become facilitators for the campus read. So we've started the class early where they can go ahead, read the book, discuss the questions that we'll use with the group because we're trying to train them to, to, to take on the role of facilitator. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's new ground for us, but I think Harmonize has certainly made it just a, an equal platform, a safer platform to start these discussions and take the baby steps to provide a safe space. And when you start discussing the race issues in, in, any, in any community, you need a safe platform. So a really good discussion question just came in our chat here from one of our attendees asking, are you using the anonymous post feature to provide that safe place? Or do you feel like your students are safe and comfortable posting with their profile showing up? I have it, I have it where they're using, it's, it's not anonymous. It, okay. They're using their profile. Now, if we open this up to, to more of a community-wide read, the we have talked about the anonymous post. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, but, but then when you have a, a picture, it keeps you a little more honest. Right. You're, you're not as, as um, you know, to just type something that you can be, I, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's a safe feature to have your, your profile. I can see that. It could work both ways. If students want to ask a question and they're uncomfortable asking the question, then that anonymous option um, could work. Yeah. Amanda, you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I just want to say that like, if you use the word discussion outside of education, you just mm -hmm. think of a conversation. You don't think about there being a right or a wrong answer, but when you use discussion in this context, referring to education and, and these submissions, students feel like their answers can be right or wrong. And specifically with what Betty Jo is talking about right now, I feel like 
us with all the things going on with social justice right now for us to to seize this opportunity to teach our students how to talk about hard subjects respectfully with each other if we don't take advantage of this opportunity we're going to regret it because it's a beautiful time for growth right now and and i love how harmonize has helped especially like specifically with video and i, and I want to see it i want to see it spread um I, I think it's just been a really amazing thing to watch well said amanda and the uh our attendees agree, you're getting a lot of compliments right now. Uh, I think a lot of people agree with exactly what you just said. And Betty Jo, I think I'm gonna have to personally fly you out to Utah. Um, we have a school district here who bought uh, tons of copies of that book and they're not allowed to share it. So I'm gonna have you come out here and talk some sense into some people, would that be okay? <laughs> Teaching the art of discussion, uh, it's awesome. Maybe we need to rename our tool, not harmonized discussions, but harmonized conversations or harmonized online communication or a harmonized community building tool, right? I'm glad you all circled back to this with the topic of difficult discussions. Anything else to add, Melinda, Betty Jo, or Amanda? I've had similar experiences, maybe not, we, maybe not so much as what Betty Jo's talking about. It really excites me to hear it go to that next level. Like for an advertising class, we'll put sensitive things out there about how you know, sexual appeals are used to sell anything from toothpaste to, you know, t-shirts. It's kind of like, and so we'll have to talk about those kind of sensitive subjects in a way that you're right. It kind of prepares the student to go into a professional, respectful way because they're taking a moment to think about what they're going to say. It doesn't just fly out of their mouth. They have to, and then they can put it out there with their face and uh, communicate back and forth about it. Other people can say, well, you know what? I read it and I didn't even see that. Mm -hmm. I didn't even notice that about it. Um, and so I think it's wonderful that, um, you know, it's going to the next level. I think that's, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Amanda, Betty Jo, any final thoughts? I, I, I just, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, creating this. Um, it is, made me feel like a better teacher. Um, it, it's a good way to give feedback um, when you can type it in and they see it directly and it's it's to that particular student. I think the feedback component of teaching uh, sometimes gets overlooked. And uh, mm -hmm. this is a great way to interact with students when you, um, and even as, as Melinda pointed out, even when my classes, because I have three on-ground classes right now too, I'm still using these discussion boards and it's a good way for them, I don't know, to kind of say, hey, did you see my post yesterday? Mm -hmm. it, it goes on whether you're online or not. Awesome. Well, I will say thank you. Not, 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 don't thank us, we just make the tool, but thank you for using it and for uh, giving us feedback and please keep that feedback going, uh, coming. Amanda, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, not at all. I uh, just wanted to say as an administrator in terms of I've already talked about the ease of use, but don't even though I was an instructor, even though I feel like I can empathize with what my instructors are going through, don't don't make a decision on how this is going to be used at your institution, because when I first saw this, I just thought it was a great way to make our discussions look better. I never imagined that Betty Jo was going to go as deep as she did. I never imagined that Melinda was going to be able to take her program and make it and meet her students wherever they were and be able to provide this way to, to reconnect when everything was getting disconnected. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that that was going to happen. So be open to how that can happen. And um, the last thing that I would like to say is that um, have you ever had like a dish that you prepared for other people and then they were like, oh, wow this looks so fancy. And you're like, oh, well, let me tell you, look, this is how easy it was. That's really how I feel with heart. Like th they look so fancy and it looks so great. Like our, our instructors are like, look what I did, you know, and they're bragging on something. They feel proud about these things. Um, but it's just so easy um, from the, the milestones where the students can uh, put their original post by a certain deadline and then turn around and, and have to you know repost to the group a certain deadline. I and mean, that was a huge deal for us, something that I didn't see happening and being such a big deal. Um, the plagiarism detection that 
is not built in Canvas that you can have uh, built into Harmonize. That was a big deal for us. So, um, you know, if, if there's anybody who's considering it, I would say definitely give it a try because you really just don't know how big an impact just a little tweak can make. Well, thank you. That's great advice from an educational leader. You know, look to your educators to see which tool works best for them. We are in the business of trying to make your life easier. So thank you for that. In fact, uh, let me ask a quick question here uh, of our attendees. There's a little poll that Heather's going to pop up. We kind of want to know what tools do you need to make your life easier with online discussions? Uh, what features can we use, can we add to Harmonize that you'd be interested in? Things like attendance, the debate style questions, the annotate PDFs. Uh, let us know. Or if there's something you don't see on this list, would you just throw it into chat? Um, and then I'm going to shift here to any questions that have come in, anything in Q&A board. Um, Heather, that we should uh, cover that we missed? No, no, I think a lot of the chats came in chat and you uh, jumped right mm -hmm. on those. Uh, if you do have yeah. questions you want to get in, you can uh, put in them now in the next couple minutes while you finish up, Michael, and we can address it. But I think you really did cover uh, quite a bit of them. All right. Well, I will finish up with just a couple things to share. We do have a webinar coming up on September 30th. Sorry, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And that's where we will dive into the features of Harmonize, show you things like what SpeedGrader looks like in Canvas and talk about Blackboard and Brightspace and all of those things. We'll hit on milestones, which Amanda brought up. Thank you for reminding us about that. Milestones are multiple due dates. Um, if you liked this panel, you're probably going to love what we have coming up on November 4th, Symphonized. This is an online, fully online conference. It's a short one, about five hours long. We are going to have keynote speakers, um, general sessions, contests, prizes, giveaways. Uh, register by October 8th and you can be entered to win a $100 American Express gift card. The registration link is right there. And I think that Heather just put it in the chat. So you have that there as well. Uh, we'll review our polls real quick. Looks like attendance and debate style discussions are, no, not the leader. The number one is peer review. 75% of you asked for that. But Instructor Resource Center, um, debate style discussions, we are looking at a way to build templates that you can use and share. We did uh, introduce Q&A this summer, so we'll come out with some more things like that. And I want you all to know that we are working on updating our annotation tool to not only work with images and videos, but also with PDFs and Word documents. So look for that to come out soon. So thank you everybody who attended, but most importantly, thank you to Amanda Hood, Melinda Laird, Betty Jo Harris, you are phenomenal educators. I really enjoyed meeting you in person and it's been a pleasure to spend some time with you again here virtually, which is reality, right, Amanda? Um, thank you for your time with us. Thank you for using Harmonize and sharing it with us, uh, your feedback and your impressions and helping us to evolve this tool. But most importantly, thank you for what you do as educators, for your students, and for your learning community. Uh, everybody there in the Mississippi Community College is really just so lucky to have you on their staff. You're phenomenal.